Shalom. I'm Brother Rael from Reunited Soul, and in this video, I'm going to discuss Juneteenth being made a national holiday. Is it a harmless empty gesture or a Trojan horse being presented to the black community? Whether you are a fan of Juneteenth being made a national holiday or not, just know that the decision to do so will affect the black community. And whether it will be positive or negative remains to be seen. So let us nourish our soul with scripture that we may reunite with the Most High, the Elohim of Yahzrael. All scriptures will be read verbatim from the King James Version Bible. Now let's get right into it. In this discussion, I'm going to use the term black community as a means of identifying the Most High's people. Although there are many others who share the same melanated tones as us, they prefer to identify themselves by the land that their people call home. Many of us, however, in the black community do not share the same sentiment, for we know, according to Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, that we are currently strangers in a land that is not ours. Let's go to it. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, and I read. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. And we are reminded of this prophetic fact on a daily basis. So the term black is not about the color of our skin. The term black more so identifies our current situation. A nation of people dwelling in a strange land. I hope that this won't be a distraction from the message. I'll begin this discussion by asking, can anyone remember exactly what were the benefits to the black community when they made Martin Luther King Jr. birthday a holiday? First, it became a federal holiday in 1983. Then seven years later, in the year 2000, all 50 states finally joined in and made it a government holiday. So, Martin Luther King Jr.'s holiday had kind of a rocky start. Not all Americans were feeling the kumbaya moment of equality for the black community. Now, fast forward 21 years later. We now have Juneteenth being made a national holiday to commemorate the end of slavery in the United States of America. Juneteenth is actually specific to the black community. So can anyone remember exactly what are the benefits to the black community for making Juneteenth a holiday? Being that Juneteenth is in regards to the freeing of slaves after the Civil War, this holiday could be more racially charged or racially sensitive, if you will, than Martin Luther King Jr.'s holiday. And what does that mean exactly? Well, it could mean a rise in harassment, a rise in hate speech, and a rise in hate crimes towards the black community around the time of the Juneteenth holiday. Let's be very clear. This in addition to the racial hostilities that we in the black community already have to deal with all year round. Can anyone remind me what are the benefits to the black community making Juneteenth a holiday? A day that the black community already celebrates without needing special permission, approval, or racial backlash from the dominant society. Perhaps while I'm thinking of how making Juneteenth a national holiday benefits the black community, at this time, allow me to define the term Trojan horse that I mentioned earlier in my intro. The origin of the term is militaristic in nature. That's right. The Trojan horse was used as a military tactic by the Greeks to gain the advantage after a full frontal assault had failed against the walls of Troy. Let's go ahead and define it. According to Merriam-Webster, a Trojan horse is 
someone or something intended to defeat or subvert from within, usually by deceptive means. Understand this, brothers and sisters. Strategy, whether it's for sport or military use, is the ability to deceive your opponent. As clearly stated by Sun Tzu, a Chinese general and military strategist best known for the writings of The Art of War, stated, all warfare is based on deception. Let me repeat that. All warfare is based on deception. Deception is a very effective way to get your opponent in a position that will be to your advantage. To divert your opponent's attention that will cause a response or reaction while you unleash your true intentions elsewhere. Like faking the run in football to throw the pass. Jabbing with the left hand in boxing to set up the overhand right knockout punch. And the military's ability to hit you hard where and when you least expect it. Strategy is playing the long game while finding your opponent's most vulnerable areas in order to deal that final blow where they cannot recover from it. Warfare is about strategic deception and those who are easily deceived are unfit to hold leadership positions in warfare. Let's be very clear. Strategy in warfare is best left to those who are committed to survival, outthinking their opponent, and victory. That kind of mindset usually comes from the warrior class of a people, not the entertainment class. Let me repeat that. That kind of mindset usually comes from the warrior class of a people, not the entertainment class. And we as a people must know the difference between the two. With that being said, to summarize the origin of the Trojan horse, the Greeks were fighting a nine-year-long battle against Troy. The Greeks failed to penetrate the walls of Troy, so they stopped their failed attack and presented Troy with a large wooden statue of a horse. The Greeks convinced the Trojans that the horse was an offering to Athena, the goddess of war. Now, when the Trojans brought the large statue of the horse inside their gates, at nightfall, Greek warriors hidden inside the horse climbed down, opened the protective gates of Troy, and allowed the Greek army to march right in and launch a successful attack. So, that's how the term Trojan horse came about. It's an effective strategy of deception to get past protective barriers in order to strike a decisive blow to your opponent. Strategy is definitely for thinkers and those who are very good at it are committed to finding their opponent's vulnerabilities, constantly studying their opponent for that sign of weakness that they may be exploited. And yes, strategy is used to keep the black community in the chaotic state that we're in. And how so, you ask? By failed public school systems, failed public services, an overly aggressive and unjust criminal justice system, redlining in the housing industry, unfair employment opportunities, glorifying degenerate behavior and criminal stereotypes through the entertainment industry, and allowing drugs and guns to flow freely in our communities to ensure those negative stereotypes are reinforced, which in turn justifies the aggressive policing in our communities to institutionalize our men, both young and old, in the prison industrial complex. And if all that was not enough, the cherry on top of this master plan is the government subsidizing our women for the absence of those incarcerated black men who should be heading their households, fathering their children, and growing a strong warrior class among their people. And let's be very clear, 
The warrior class do not terrorize their own people, poison them with drugs, or exploit their women. The warrior class protect and preserve the lineage of its people. Without active fathers in the community, the young males become parasitic in nature and feed off the community instead of cultivating it. So understand the strategy of removing the father from the head of the family equation. The warrior class dies off and the women are left to fend for themselves as they procreate with males who are the byproduct of communities that are being crushed by warfare. After decades of maintaining the strategy, like a combustion cycle of an engine, the chain reaction will just keep repeating itself as long as there is fuel in the tank. It is a long game strategy, but as you can see, very effective. 400 years of prophetic affliction and the only thing that stands between the black community and total annihilation is the covenant that we have with the Most High and Him alone. Unfortunately, majority of the black community have instead been indoctrinated to embrace a messianic covenant shared by the very people who despise and afflict them. Psychiatrists may call it Stockholm Syndrome, but the Torah calls it Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. There's a lot going on, family. With an ongoing pandemic, a political shift, an assault on the capital, and the economic crisis with no end in sight, the nation's focus always come back full circle against the black community. Whether it's aggressively trying to get the black community to take the shot, pushing critical race theory in the media, downplaying hate crimes against the black community, and in turn, accusing the black community of hate crimes against the Asian community. Pay close attention to the moves that are being made, brothers and sisters. And just by looking at the thumbnail for this discussion, you can clearly see the fallacy of making Juneteenth a national holiday without setting tangibles or added protective measures in place for the black community. Have we not learned anything from making Martin Luther King Jr. birthday a national holiday? Did that improve the black community? Make the black community any safer? or reduce racial tensions in the country? No, not at all. So what we have here in both cases is a paid holiday for everyone. And with the black community suffering the highest unemployment rate in the nation, holidays that are supposedly meant to shed light on our plight benefits us the least, which makes a holiday for us merely an empty gesture. It would be laughable if it wasn't so insulting. It is what it is, family. The heathen can't resist giving a good backhanded compliment. It doesn't take an academic scholar to understand that making Juneteenth a national holiday doesn't benefit the black community in the way that it should, if it was a sincere and genuine gesture. Opening a path to repentance of a nation and reparations for the black community, which many of you already know that the heathen is incapable of doing, although some are still hopeful. If you haven't already, please take a look at my video discussion, Reparations versus Judgment, for my thoughts on reparations for the black community. With that being the case, the question that we must ask is, since Juneteenth doesn't benefit the black community, can it harm the black community in any way or compromise the celebration of Juneteenth altogether? And you may ask, how can a celebration of freedom that we as a people started on our own and needed no approval or acceptance from the dominant society be compromised? And that's a fair question. To find the answer to that question, 
All one has to do is look at any part of our culture, the black community's culture that we share with others. Look at any part of our culture that we completely handed over to others and you will find your answer. Look no further than our music industry. We went from Motown quality class act to hood town ratchet buffoonery. You see, when something belonged to the black community, ran by the black community, and catered to the black community, we made damn sure that it represented the black community very well. However, when we allow others to buy out and take over something that belonged to our culture, the others are going to twist it for maximum profit and taint it to our shame. Another example would be the civil rights movement. The black community suffered abuse and violence through decades of peaceful protest. And through Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, freedom for all minority groups became the rally cry of the day. Now, here we are today. The black community is still fighting for our rights, freedoms, and justice. While other minority groups, to our dismay, have moved on and teamed with those who oppress the black community. Now, does that mean that every single person within that minority group is bad? No, not at all. Just keep in mind that there is a significant number of influential people within those minority groups that desire the black community to remain beneath them. Another strategy in warfare is calculating the cost. In other words, why fight an opponent when you can just buy their loyalty at a fraction of the price it would take for you to defeat them? Now, those we fought for during the civil rights movement have justified in their minds, somebody has got to be on the bottom. Why not the ones who naively fought for freedom and justice for all? And I know that may sound offensive and diabolical to those of you with sensitive hearts, but it's basic heathen stratagem, or should I say, modus operandi. It's how they operate. Now, hopefully, if you weren't already convinced, believe and understand that we are scattered among the heathen, as scripture dictates. And although not all heathens get along with one another, they will be on one accord with the affliction of the black community because it's their assignment given to them by the Most High. Now that Juneteenth is a national holiday, that gives others access to something that belongs exclusively to the black community. And what does that mean exactly? It means that, like our music industry, others who are not our people will dictate what this Juneteenth celebration should look like who the representatives of this holiday will be and set the social agenda for whatever direction they want Juneteenth to go. If you need a visual reminder, just think back to the Motown tribute at the 2019 Grammys. To our dismay and disbelief, it was not a black person who they chose to perform that tribute. Let me repeat that. It was not a black person whom they chose to perform that tribute. And sadly, too many in our black community didn't have a problem with them giving that honor to another nationality. And there's that backhanded compliment that I mentioned earlier, that the heathen can't resist giving the black community. What is the likelihood of the Country Music Awards selecting an artist from the black community to do a tribute for one of their recorded labels. How about the Latin American Music Awards? Can you see them selecting one of our artists to do a tribute to honor their musical achievements? But you can see how other nationalities can easily inject themselves into our culture with no problem. The black community has the lion's share when it comes to talent. If our celebrities ever get the full understanding that talent is the currency of entertainment, they can withhold that talent to the black community's advantage. And of course, 
you'll have those of lesser talent willing to sell out for less. But the lion's share of our talent can gain that advantage and truly represent the culture of the black community where everything is not hypersexualized buffoonery. The heathen controls the money, but we control the talent. And whoever plays their hand strategically will be master over the other. But I digress. I know I can go on a tangent on the exploitation of our people's talent and culture. In my opinion, some things just should not be for sale. So best believe in given time, the Juneteenth holiday will no longer represent the black community's interest. It will be hijacked like so many other parts of our culture that we willingly share with others, allowing those who are not committed to the black community to gain influence, control, then rewrite the narrative and reset the agenda. In conclusion, without providing any tangibles or added civic protection to the black community, what exactly is the benefit to those who are the descendants of slaves for making Juneteenth a national holiday to commemorate the end of slavery? A day that acknowledges the end of the most brutal and inhumane slavery in recorded history. with nothing tangible offered the descendants of slaves exclusively as they continue to fight against the injustice of hatred. When it comes to making an atonement and making things right with the black community, it always seems to be a mountain too high. When it comes to giving something to the black community, it has to be given to all people of color, although all people of color were not brought to this country in chains against their will and afflicted for over 400 years. The pure lack of humanity from so-called civilized society can be mind-boggling. And the only way to make sense of it all is to know what thus said the Most High. How he would scatter his people among the heathen and be left few in number. Without this vital knowledge, we would be left in complete bewilderment as to why the black community is beset on all sides by those who have a perpetual hatred of them. Yet, here we have Juneteenth, a national holiday made to commemorate the end of slavery that could possibly incite more racially charged violence towards the black community. Yet, provide no tangibles or added protection from the backlash of those who are consumed by their hatred of the black community. Let's be very clear. The only protection we have from the heathen comes from the Most High as he puts an end to their assignment of afflicting his people and turn our captivity. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 12 through 17 and I read, For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wounds is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine infliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Now, allow me to pause for a moment, brothers and sisters, before I continue. We have seen for the past 400 years, the Most High making good on his word. Most of you have experienced this, lived this, witnessed this with your own eyes. Now together, let's read the part that is to come. And I read, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, 
and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Be encouraged, family. The Most High is coming to restore his people and bring justice and judgment to the earth that only he can bring. We have witnessed that he makes good on his word. We have no reason to doubt what is yet to come. However, the question remains, is Juneteenth an empty gesture or a Trojan horse presented to the black community? And before answering the question, I want you to, for a moment, think as if you are part of the Most High's warrior class. You are a faithful captain in King David's army, standing by in formation on the field of battle as you watch your opponent approach with what seems to be a peace offering by making Juneteenth a celebrated holiday for all nations to observe. However, nothing tangible comes with the offer. As a matter of fact, your nation will benefit the least. And being that you are a captain with fierce warriors under your command, and understanding that all warfare is based on deception. What are your thoughts on a Juneteenth holiday being presented by your opponent? A valuable offer? An empty gesture? Or a Trojan horse? Do you respond by accepting the Juneteenth peace offering from a crafty opponent and present it to your beloved King David? Or do you reject it and keep fighting? A lot is going on, family. Perhaps I'm just being a bit too dramatic, overly cautious, with a smidge of paranoia. After all, it's just a holiday. I mean, how bad can it actually get? Being, this is not the first holiday on the behalf of the pain and suffering of the black community. Martin Luther King's Jr. holiday passed without the black community being totally destroyed. Why would Juneteenth be any different? Now, that's a fair question. And I know this discussion is about Juneteenth, but we must consider the incremental factors that can eventually tip the scales. We must consider the deceptive strategies of warfare and not naively look upon things as just mere coincidence. In regards to warfare, it's not the obvious things that are in plain sight, but the things that you fail to acknowledge as relevant that makes the difference between victory or defeat. Remember, as General Sun Tzu eloquently put it, all warfare is based on deception. So if you are one who is easily deceived or easily distracted, then your defeat is certain. With that being said, always keep your trust in the Most High. Love Him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. See to it that your household is in line with the Word of the Most High as best you can. I thank you for taking the time to watch. Again, I am Rael, your reunited soul brother. And with that, I say to you, Shalom.